Suppose I have a set A that consists of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I have a set B which consists of the letters A, B, C, and D. And I define the function f to map 1 to A, 2 to C, 3 to B, and 4 to D. Now is there any way to undo f, to find a function that does the reverse? In other words, if I have a set B, A, B, C, and D, and I have a set A, 1, 2, 3, and 4, I want A to go back to 1, and I want B to go back to 3, C to go back to 2, and D to go back to 4, and I'll call this function G. Well, in this case, I have found a function that does just that, and in this case, we can refer to G as the inverse of F or we can write it like this, g equals f with a little negative 1, and that little negative 1 denotes f inverse. Now, not all functions have inverses, but when they do, we can make the following definition. Let f be a function from a set a to a set b. Then f inverse is a function from a set b to a set a. And f inverse is said to be an inverse of f if for any element y in the set b, f inverse of y equals x if and only if f of x equals y. So let's look at this example again, and now I've, instead of calling it g, I've called it f inverse. And let's try and apply the definition to this. So this says that if we look at the definition, f inverse of y equals x, so f inverse of y equals x, if and only if, f of x equals y. So in this case, I can say that x is something that's in the set A, and y is something that's in the set B. In fact, I'll write that here. Think of x being an element from the set A, and y being an element from the set B. Okay, so let's try a few examples here. So this says that f inverse of A equals 1 in this case. That should be the same thing as f of 1 equaling a. And f of 1 does equal a. And we can try another one here. How about f inverse of b? f inverse of b, f inverse of b, that's 3. And that should be the same as saying f of 3 equals b. Is that true? f of 3 equals b. So I think you get the idea here. I could keep going and, uh, and do uh, the same thing for c and d here. Um, but I think you see that this definition does indeed work. Now, what would happen if I were to apply function composition to f and f inverse? In other words, what if we looked at something like, how about f inverse composed with f. And we'll look at some examples here. So if I'm going to do f inverse composed with f uh, on something, this something here needs to come from the set A. So I will say 1 as an example. So this would be the same thing as f inverse of f of 1. And that's the same thing as f inverse of What's f of 1? f of 1 is a. So it would be the same thing as f inverse of a. And f inverse of a, that's 1. OK. So I started here, if we look over here, at 1. And I ended with 1. Let's try it again for something else. So how about f inverse composed with f of 2? OK, so that's the same thing as saying f inverse of f of 2, and that's the same thing as saying f inverse of, and what is f of 2? f of 2 is c, and so I can put a c here, and then I have f inverse of c is 2. And so I think you see what's going on here. They sort of uh, cancel each other out. So we have a 1 here, we have a 1 here, we have a 2 here, we have a 2 here. What about the other way around? What if instead I did f composed with f inverse? And this time I would need to do something from the set b here. So let's say a, and this is the same thing as f of f inverse of a, 
And that's the same thing as, well, what's f inverse of a? f inverse of a is 1, so this is f of 1. And what's f of 1? That's a. The same thing seems to work. I end up back with the same thing. They seem to cancel each other out. And just to really check, I'll do one more. How about f of, f inverse of, and, oh, uh, I don't know, let's try, uh, how about d? I haven't used that letter yet. And then I can say this is the same thing as f of f inverse of d. And that's the same thing as f of f inverse of d is 4. And so this is f of 4. And what's f of 4? f of 4 is d. So you see what's happening here. I, I get a, the same thing back. This is sort of acting like the identity function f composed with f inverse and f inverse composed with f each act like the identity function. So another way to think about inverses here is in terms of the identity function. A function f which goes from a set a to a set b is said to be invertible if there exists a function f inverse which goes from a set b to a set a such that f inverse composed with f is the identity map on a and f composed with f inverse is the identity map on b. Let's look at an example. Suppose f is the function from the set of integers to 5z, 5 times the set of integers, given by f of m equals 5m. And just to remind you what this is, this 5z thing here, um, this is that set that sort of looks like this. I'll write out a little bit of it here. Negative 15, negative 10, negative 5, 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on. So that's what this set is that we're talking about. And let's let g be the uh, function that goes from 5z to z, and that's given by g of n equals n over 5. And let's uh, compute the function composition here of these two things. So how about f composed with g on some element x. Okay, so that is f of g of x. And that is f of, okay, what's g of x? Well, g of x would be x over 5. That's x over 5. And what's f of x over 5? f of x over 5 is 5 times x over 5. That would be 5 times x over 5. And then you see that this is just x. So it really does act like the identity function. What about the other way around? If I did g composed with f of x, will I also get x? So this would be g of f of x. And this would be g of, what's f of x? That's 5x. And then g of 5x would be 5x over 5. And I do indeed still get x. So in this case, we can say that f and g are inverses of each other. Or I can, if I want, I can say g equals f inverse.